like I said, you know, it, uh, I was really impressed with that whole, with the whole, uh, you know, piece. Uh, one of the things that was kind of neat that I really liked was the Apple sharing, um, the the screen sharing, that, that that happens, you know, over the, uh, over the Apple TV, and I, we all know that Apple is going to be rolling kind of new Apple TV shortly, but. Um, how the screen sharing is so simple, and I think that's a huge piece for Apple because a lot of people have always struggled with the years of trying to get their their Apple display onto their onto their television or onto screens for you know um, projects and presentations and stuff like that. So I'm really impressed with, with that part of, of Apple's uh, with that part of their you know that that particular part of you know the product. So uh, the the other thing that that I think really was neat was the the hibernation piece. Um, you know, you can enclose a little bit. It'll still keep the updates and all that up to date. Another big step for Apple. Um, you know, I, I like the, the way the guy said it too. I believe, he's like, oh, we all love using our Macs, but wouldn't it be nice if you can put your Mac, in, you know, to sleep and it'll still do updates and all that type of stuff? I thought that was a really cool, cool part of the keynote. So, uh, you know, kudos for for that for great presentation that they had. Uh, one of the things that was cool was Tim, seeing Tim Cook, you know, especially, you know, you put the emphasis on the on the developers rather than put the emphasis on himself like Jobs used to do. I, I think overall it's a different approach, and that's uh, pretty cool, and I thought it was kind of neat to see uh, definitely see Tim Cook walking around in a pair of jeans and a black uh, dress shirt, so that was kind of funny, uh, kind of taking a little bit of a little bit of a page out of Jobs' book. So uh, one of the other things that... Uh, that was neat to see at the WWDC was to, uh, you know, definitely, um, definitely get to see the, uh, the, the new iOS and, and the maps, the integrated maps piece. Uh, I was just reading an article yesterday about how Google is going to be really upset because it's all data that they're losing, uh, to Apple maps. And, and I kind of agree with them on that because I mean, you know, Apple, Apple's kind of really taking a big, big chunk. I mean, I know one of myself when I use maps on, uh, uh, on my iPhone, no, it, it says Google at the bottom left-hand corner. But I mean, I'm ha- I'm happy to see that they're going to be, you know, moving away from the uh, from the current maps because I, I'm not going to lie, I, I I I do a lot of a lot of traveling in my line of work, and I'm always making wrong turns and stuff like that because of the Apple Maps. Uh, this whole turn by turn navigation is something that I personally am majorly majorly looking forward as as a traveler to to gain the use on my on my iPhone. So I, I I'm very happy about the turn by turn navigation piece and the whole 3D maps and and I, I mean uh, overall I think I think Apple's done an incredible pro, uh, an incredible job with it. Um, but uh, you know something that, that I personally and myself on the iOS has been, you know, waiting for it. Um, some of the other features of the iOS I think were cool was the whole uh, proximity. You know, I'll, uh, you know, uh, remind me later. You know, somebody's calling you. You don't want that call. Uh, the remind me later feature, and then when you walk out of a certain proximity, that'll actually remind you to call the person back. So I think that's definitely a huge, huge piece that. Uh, that I definitely think that Apple's been missing. That's going to really be cool, as well as the "Do Not Disturb" feature. That's going to prevent you from getting phone calls in the middle of the night and stuff like that. Um, that that's definitely something cool too. That I know myself, being somebody that gets calls all hours of the day and night. Uh, you know, definitely, definitely looking looking forward to it. So, and then the the other piece is the uh, that the passport piece. The uh, or that that passbook piece, which is very very cool, I really enjoyed that. The whole thought of you know you can have all your passes in one place. That was something cool. There actually uh, there actually have been apps like that before in the past. Um, I know myself. I've I've seen them and I've actually used them. Um, but this is actually going to be native to Apple now, so I'm sure it'll be you know might be better support and all that type of stuff than uh, what we've been de- dealing with. Especially coming from Apple, they have a little more stroke in the industry than if you just have an app provider uh, doing it. So I'm sure that's something too uh, that travelers, um, you know, what we'll be looking forward to as well. But the, you know, overall, like I said, for me, the, the big the big thing was the, the 3D maps, and uh, just some other uh, obviously more Facebook integration as well into the iOS, which I think is a big piece for Apple. Um, you know, they're showing that they're they're acknowledging social media, even though you know their their one their one social network didn't work out. At least they're you know moving forward with one that is working out in the industry so that's definitely something that i'm uh you know really really impressed with them about um you know there's a couple other different a uh, couple of things too that were you know impressive with, with, with the ios that um you know that, that i think one of the things is the uh the, you know, the facetime over the uh over the cellular network i think that's something that they've been really behind on um 
Yeah, I know Android has been on that for a long time now. Um, but you know that's something that Apple's really been really been lagging with, and uh, you know they're, they're definitely uh, moving forward with that. So that's another good piece that I'm actually uh, you know very looking forward to. So, but well, you know we've been chewing up a nice nice chunk of this uh, this podcast here uh, talking about you know the new Microsoft products, um, and uh, as well as the the WWDC, which is fine. You know, I mean, you know, normally our podcasts have been focusing on security and stuff like that, but nothing wrong with talking about, uh, you know, other products and other things going on. Um, you know, like I said, Lepani Technologies, we, we do a lot more than just security. We emphasize on it, but, um, you know, we, we do a lot more. Um, you know, if you have any other, you know, any questions about anything else other than security, feel free to ask them. If I don't have the answer, I can definitely get it for you. But uh, like I said, you know, it, it, you know when, especially when it comes to... Uh, comes to uh, you know security nowadays there's so much built in under that nowadays you know system system center especially products like that used to be its own you know used to be the system center you know more of a infrastructure type of person now it's falling under security because if your updates aren't up to date and uh you know your, your patches aren't out and you know software's not tested you get a virus so now the system center kind of start to fall under security as well as oper- operations management as well starting to fall under security even more now uh i know uag and uh you know a lot of products um you know intrusion detection and uh you know, even contact filtering, all that stuff is all falling under the security cloud now, which is kind of good for our, uh, good for good for business and, and good for the industry as well. Uh, one of the things I want to bring up just regarding security that WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange or whatever his name is, um, forgive the pronounce, uh, pronunciation of the uh, the surname, he's still fighting the uh, that uh, not being extradited. Uh, I heard his lawyers and all that are working pro bono. He's actually been living in a friend's house. Um, while he's where he is waiting to get, uh, you know, try, waiting to fight this case. So I thought that was kind of neat, still seeing that he's still having his, his problems. So I thought that was kind of neat. Um, but uh, the, the other thing I wanted to, uh, the other thing I wanted to focus on is uh, last, uh, Last.fm uh, got hacked just recently. And, uh, one of the things too, I, I didn't know, kind of, kind of, kind of went under the radar a little bit. Is actually eHarmony got hacked um, right around the same time LinkedIn did. So it's uh, kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, especially, uh, it was kind of cool for not kind of cool, but something that kind of struck me a little interesting was even though they got they got hacked, uh, I didn't realize they actually had uh, links to Spotify and stuff like that. So anybody that's a you know Spotify member and uh, or last FM user or anybody that's got especially integrated with Facebook, change your Facebook password as well. Um, so it's kind of kind of neat to uh, not that they got hacked, but it's kind of kind of interesting that that you know the LinkedIn, Harmony, and Last.fm all seem to fall around the same time. You wonder if they're related. You never know. Uh, one of the things that there was an interesting article on Mashable I happened to stumble across. Um, there's apparently a security company named Rapid Seven. Um, they apparently do a lot of work. Um, investigating uh dot com hacks and stuff like that. They actually released on Mashable a uh, thirty pass thirty of the top passwords that were used on uh used on LinkedIn. Believe it or not, one believe it or not the, one of the top ones was Link. One of the top ones was career. I can't believe that uh, one of the ones that was actually on here is actually the is actually actually it was funny it was the word God and and sex were were two of the top ones on this list, which are kind of interesting because if you ever saw the movie Hackers, which anybody that's into security, I'm sure has seen it with Angelina Jolie when she was much younger. It's a good movie if you haven't seen it. Definitely take the third I think it's like 88 minutes. It's real short. Um, that was one of the passwords that they that they talked about never using in the movie. So, um, a little bit, a little bit interesting to uh, to see, you know, the, the password. So, you know. Uh, as I said, it's on Mashable, and uh, interesting to see what, what some people put as their, their password. It's pretty intense, and I, I think it's kind of interesting that it made it to a post. But uh, like I said, one of the other things that was in the, the news the other day, actually, was in the, uh, it was actually in the New York Times, actually. It was kind of shocking. They don't, they don't really cover computer stories that much. Not like they used to anymore. They're actually talking about not enough security uh, people nowadays for the amount of... Uh, problems that are out there so that's kind of neat uh definitely good for any of us that are in security kind of uh you know goes ahead and uh kind of makes you want to keep going because uh 
plenty of work out there. Um, one of the things too that I thought was interesting was there was an interesting article on uh, Comcast. Apparently, does not want to keep following down these BitTorrent people anymore. Apparently, they're saying it's not worth the time and they don't get paid for it, so they're not doing it. So it's interesting to see. Apparently, let's read a quick excerpt from the article. Comcast has run out of patience with the uh, avalanche of BitTorrent lawsuits in the United States. The ISP is now refusing to comply with court orders. Well, that's not good. Uh, but is looking to pay settlements instead um, to copyright holders uh, in response to the Comcast new new stance claiming that ISPs uh, is denying copyright holders the opportunity to protect their work. Uh, apparently... Comcast isn't going to bother wasting their time shaking people down anymore. So that'll be interesting to see how that works out for them. I can't see the movie industry, especially not not taking a stand against them, especially on something like that. So that's pretty pretty interesting. I know I know that I know of, uh, I know of people using using Demonoid and stuff like that, and uh, I know they've been getting nailed pretty hard from ISPs. Um, I know even some ISPs have even gone as far as to block the ports. Be curious to see what what com, how Comcast makes out with that. That's when follow, most Australia might actually follow. By the way, if you're looking for good good security news, I found that on Reddit. There's a NetSec, N E T S E C section. It's pretty good. Uh, definitely has uh, everything you'd want to know about uh, you know about about uh, kind of I must say underground security, but definitely security that doesn't make the news. Let's leave it at that. One of the other things is the uh, one of the other things talking about uh, fighting back. Uh, apparently, there were, there are some companies out there that are apparently very upset with the about getting hacked, and apparently that because of the way our, our the laws are designed, um, if they get hacked from somebody that's out of the country, obviously the process is very long and drawn out. And there are companies that are actually hiring other companies to actually go after these people. Uh, Actually, there, there's there's actually, comp, there actually. From, let me just read you a quick excerpt. The United States and other countries uh, are hiring contractors to hack the hackers that have hacked them. Kind of interesting to see that where where this is going to go. Kind of like you know, I don't know. It's kind of one of those things. It's going to be going to be really, really tough. You know, to hack somebody else's system, or you see somebody hacking. You're just as much trouble as the person that hacked your network is. You know, two wrongs don't make a right type of thing. But Crazy how that works. One of the things that uh, one of the other things too is there's a, a patch out by the way. There's a MySQL authentication bypass vulnerability. So if you're running MySQL, make sure you patch it. Uh, the serious security bug in MariaDB and MySQL disclosed, according to advisors, uh, MS. I'm sorry, uh, MySQL version 516152.11535.5 and 55.22 are vulnerable. The issue got assigned a, a particular code I, a CVE 2012 2122. When users connect to a main did when connects to the main database, a token. Um, Shay over a password and the random scramble string is calculated and carried with uh, ex- ex- carried with an expected value. Because of the incorrect casting, it might be vulnerable that the token value and consist uh, can be compromised and a malicious code can be used to crack the password. Even when um, it is being transferred, it is still vulnerable due to this particular vulnerability. So because it used, because the protocol you pretty much what that's saying is because the protocol you just random strings the probability of hitting the bug uh, is about one in well you have a one in two hundred fifty six chance so I would definitely take the time to go ahead and uh, patch your systems if you have MySQL what what this means.